Jack's well-being, your well-being, your client's well-being. When I was doing the calculations, we had a £10,000 back bill, a £6,000 rent bill. So as you can imagine, that hit the price of that from the social media table. Okay, delete the query and write a new query to the username column and the sum of total change in the followers. Well, from Instagram. Rianne had big expansion plans for 2020. Now her only ambition is to open the doors. Dorothy has seen the seasons come and go in her Chesterfield store for three years. But how can she now plan what to stock when she doesn't know when she'll open? When we close, we just run into bay all day. It's very difficult because when we open the doors, it's not April. We'll be going to the summer. It's a completely different summer. It's a completely different style. I'm very, very optimistic that things will come back again. We've got some very resilient brilliant customers, and I'm sure it will come back. It's just when. Melissa is optimistic, but cautiously so. She says the road ahead must be a clear one. What we're all hoping for is clarity and fairness. Clarity on clear rules that are in place, and if it is going to be a tiered system, what that entails for hairdressers. And fairness, because last time there was a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of stress, time and money wasted on unclear rules. They have done all that they can to prepare. Now all that's left to do is wait. Let's bring you a little bit more on this Scottish study, which uh, is looking at the effectiveness of the various vaccinations that we have uh, being rolled out at the moment. Our health correspondent, Anna Collinson, is here. Uh, talk us through the findings. Yeah, well, some really exciting findings, Victoria, actually. Um, up until now, when we've spoken about vaccine efficacy, we've been talking about clinical trials, which have involved tens of thousands of people. But this study is about what's going on in the real world. How is the vaccine working? And crucially, this is the first study to describe the effect the two vaccines are having based on the UK's rollout um, on an entire country in preventing hospitalisations in relation to coronavirus. It looks at more than 1.1 million first doses admitted in Scotland between the start of December and mid-February. And they compared those admitted to hospital with COVID to those who admitted and were not vaccinated. And just over 8,000 people ended up in hospital but only 58 of those were the ones who'd been vaccinated four weeks previously. So in the case of Pfizer, hospitalizations were reduced by 85%, and Oxford AstraZeneca, even more, it was 94%. Among the over 80s, the combined figure was an 81% reduction. Now, it's important to point out that this, uh, these findings, they are preliminary, they have not been published, so this is all suggestions, but it's a real hopeful sign of the impact that the vaccine rollout is having on the coronavirus. And so what does that mean for, yeah. for all of us who are still waiting for vaccines? Well, first and foremost, what the researchers say is if you, if and when it's your turn to get a jab, take it, not just the first dose, but also that crucial second dose. They also say that our behaviour shouldn't change and that current policies shouldn't change and who's being prioritised. But what they are saying is the positives, is the, the positive impact this will have on the NHS, which has had an incredibly difficult year. We all know that. It's been an extremely challenging time for them. And the hope is that while we had had hints that the vaccine rollout was working, we've seen the signs in the data last week, we're seeing positive signs in Israel. This is showing that hopefully, with hospitalizations already coming down, the vaccine is just going to take that even further. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. As we've been reporting, Scottish and Welsh schools are returning on a different timescale to England, with both nations beginning a phased return from today. Many schools in Wales have welcomed some of their youngest pupils back this morning. Some older vocational pupils on courses that need practical learning have also gone back. Our Wales correspondent Thomas Morgan visited a school in Pennart to see what preparations they were making. So uh, this school in uh, Sandoff, just outside uh, Penarth, has just opened. We've got children up until seven years old here, so half the school back in today. It's a phased return in Wales of primary school children. The rest of primary school.